know that you can experience the Philippines while still living here in the U.S.? If you're considering visiting or even moving to the Philippines, then there are several things you can do to help prepare beforehand to experience what life is like there before going to the Philippines. Or perhaps you are from the Philippines and you desire to come to the U.S. and you want to know what life could be like here as a Filipino. Maybe you are wondering if there are preferred cities in the U.S. for Filipinos that could make an easier transition for you. Welcome to Life Across the Sea, where we visit faraway places, people, food, and culture, so you can see what life is like so far away. Well, hi, I'm Eric, your host with Life Across the Sea, and I'd like to say Magadang Umaga, which is a good morning to you in Tagalog, the primary language in the Philippines, especially in the Manila region. Today, we're going to talk about how to experience Filipino life here in the U.S. Some of the questions that come up about visiting the Philippines are usually about the food and the people, so you know what to expect once you arrive and how to best fit in. One way to find out about these things is to visit a city in the U.S. with a high concentration of Filipinos so that you can experience their food, people, and community. So you're probably wondering, depending upon where you're from, does this actually exist in the U.S.? And the answer to that question is yes. There are several cities in the U.S. that have a high concentration of Filipinos with Philippine restaurants, stores, and community. So you can get a better idea of what life is like there. California leads the list out of all the states with the highest concentration of Filipinos. In Los Angeles, they have the largest Filipino population in the entire U.S., and it's estimated at a half a billion. There are lots of communities and organizations there that are focused on the Filipino culture. The history of Filipinos coming to Los Angeles dates clear back to the 1920s, when there was an area called Little Manila. Today, that area is what we refer to as Little Tokyo, and there's not much of a trace left of Little Manila. It's in the downtown LA area. Little Manila existed for about 20 years. It started in the early 1920s and 1930s, when primarily men came over looking for work. The second most populous city of Filipinos in the country is San Francisco, and that comes in at an estimated about 300,000. Daly City and Vallejo, which is just outside of the San Francisco area, has historically been a significant settlement for Filipinos going back many years. Well, the next on our list is San Diego, one of the favorite cities of the entire U.S. for most people. And the Filipinos are actually the largest Asian American subgroup in San Diego County. They total 6% of the total population, which is estimated at right around 200,000. One of the cities in that area is Temecula that's known for a Filipino concentration. The next area in Southern California is what we call the Inland Empire area of Riverside and San Bernardino. And it's estimated there's about 135,000 Filipinos in that area. After that, we go back to Northern California, just outside of the Bay Area by about an hour, is San Jose near the Silicon Valley. That's estimated about 110,000 Filipinos living there. From there, another city, which was a little more traditional where Filipinos used to go, is Stockton. It's part of California's Central Valley. And many Filipinos started their journey there and then moved to one of the other popular destinations over time. There are other popular cities across the U.S. outside of California for Filipinos to live in. The next on the list would be New York City. It's estimated at about 235,000 Filipinos living there. After that, actually Honolulu, Hawaii, has a high population at about 215,000. 
Las Vegas, Nevada is growing quickly with the Filipino community, and that's coming in at just about 150,000. A little further across the country in the middle, towards the north of it, is Chicago. Chicago's coming in at 145,000 estimated Filipinos living there. Then over to the northwest in Seattle, Washington, where it's estimated there's 115,000. And then another large community, although there's not an exact estimate of how many live there, is in Jersey City, New Jersey. Now within the greater Southern California area, there are local Filipino communities heavily concentrated in some of the smaller cities of Carson, Long Beach, Cerritos, West Covina, and Temecula, which is like inland San Diego area. Today, we're going to look at Carson, California, as it's recognized as a Filipino destination for both families and businesses for many years now. They even have a cultural celebration called the Festival of Philippine Arts and Culture. Several nearby Los Angeles Long Beach Harbor cities, like San Pedro, Wilmington, and Long Beach, have quite a few Filipino-owned businesses and a very active community. Carson has a concentration of Filipino-focused businesses located right on Carson Street. That's kind of the main drive through the city. Most of those businesses and restaurants are right there at the cross street of Maine and Carson. There are multiple Filipino restaurants, markets, bakeries, and even has a Filipino credit union. It also includes a fast food favorite found all across the Philippines called Jollibee's. That was also mentioned in my video on this channel about visiting Dumaguete in the Philippines, where we actually went into a Jollibee's there. Dumaguete is a popular destination for Westerners, so you might want to check that out. Well, here's some of the Filipino restaurants, either located on Carson Street or close to it, right off the 110 and 405 freeways in the LA area, about 30 minutes south of LAX, the airport there. Or if you're in downtown LA, it's about 20 minutes south straight down the 110 freeway to Carson Street. Most of these restaurants have been in this location since the 1980s or 90s so are well established within the community. The first one on our list is Chibugan, which is also known as Lechon at Ethan's Restaurant. And right next door, they have an Ethan's Belly Boink. This is one of the highest rated Filipino food restaurants in the area. Down the street is Baboy's at Bahay Canaan, and another local favorite. From there, you go over to Tita Celia's, and that's known for authentic Philippine cuisine with a wide range of traditional dishes. Fiesta Barbecue in Babinka is the next on our list. And as you can see, there are lots of menu options with traditional Filipino food. Also, just to mention the Babinka, that's like a rice cake that they bake. And it's a very much a, a Filipino favorite, a special treat. We also came across the Sunrise Manila and that was a fun cafe with plenty of traditional favorites, and they kind of pointed some of this out for us here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Can you tell me what which foods you have here? We got Oh, so what are those? Fresh. Oh, that's fresh. You just own the lechon? Which one's your favorite? I like lechon. You like the lechon? Okay, gotcha. And then is that squid? What? Yeah, squid, yes. What, what is that dish called? Adobo. Oh, that's adobo? Adobo squid. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, yes. Okay, it's a gotcha. Good one. How long have you guys been doing this here? Thirty years. Thirty years. Yeah, for them. For them. And then where are they from? What what part of the Philippines? Bulacan, Bulacan. Oh, okay, gotcha. Have you been there, sir? Yeah, I have been. Yeah. Yeah. Or you I've, live there. 
What's that? Did, did you live there? Or no, no, I just, uh, I go and I make uh, travel videos there. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've been all over? Yeah, I've been all over. So uh, I've been to um, Manila, really? Makati, Tagatai, Shurgao. Oh, Shurgao, you went? Cebu. Maracay, Cebu. Cebu and CDO. Oh, the Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are you from? Manila, sir. Manila, okay. And another one that we went and visited was Manila's Lake Sean Manok. And here's what we found at this location. Hello. How are you? Yes, sir. Sour pork. Sour pork. Sour fish. Okay. And it's a pork or sashimi, long delicia. Oh, that's nice. And chicken pizza. Oh, that looks good. Is that adobo? Pork bibimbap and pork minuto. Oh, I see. Okay. And these? Pork and beef curry curry. This is a lechon pork. Beef pazareta, pork adobo, pechay. Okay. Vegetable. Pancets, bitter melon, pakpet, and coconut squash. Squash. Gotcha. All are dessert. And then is this pavinka? Pavinka, pico, uti, turon, bilobilo, banana con hielo. Ah. And the pavinka, what is that made out of? Rice cake. Rice cake? Yes. So it's rice and flour? Flour. Flour. Okay, gotcha. There's also a good restaurant called Silog. There's also a highly rated and close by in the next city called Torrance. It's about a 10 minute drive from Carson. It has an Asian fusion flair to it. And it's more of a sit down, eat in type restaurant where you're seated by the hostess. If you really want to get an idea about Filipino culture, visiting a local church here would be a good way to experience the community. There is a popular Filipino Christian church in the area called the International Church of Harvest. It's Pentecostal and affiliated with the Assemblies of God denomination. So a funny story about this one, as I really had a hard time finding it. The church was previously called American Filipino Community Church. I had a hard time finding it at all on Google. I ended up using ChatGPT with artificial intelligence to try to locate it. As I was researching this, I came across a, another church with a similar name. It's called Filipino American Christian Church. Now, it used to be located in Carson, but some time ago, it moved about 10 to 15 minutes away to North Long Beach. Well, this is the fun part of making these videos, as sometimes it turns into a bit of a treasure hunt, as it's a bit of a challenge trying to piece things together, so you never quite know how it will turn out or if you'll get all the information. So I decided to drive over to Long Beach and just ask if it was the same church. Once I arrived there, the front door to the church was open. It was about 9 a.m. or so, so I went in. A nice lady came up to me and asked if she could help, as the worship band was about to start their practice before the service, as they had about an hour to go. The guy leading the worship was on the piano. And he caught my attention as he was quite a gifted musician. And I watched as he arranged the music on the fly, making changes. And then told the rest of the group what to do. Well, she introduced me, even though I was a complete stranger to several people, 
who tried to answer my question about the church I was trying to find. Well, it turned out to be a completely different church. But the people were so nice. And it was fun to be there and watch them practice that I stayed quite a while and really enjoyed the experience. Honestly, these were some of the friendliest and kindest people I've ever met. If I wasn't in such a hurry, I would have stayed for the service. Just to get to know everyone and see what they were all about because they were just so friendly and welcoming for me to be there. They explained that they were more like a Baptist church. Well, it was getting late, so I decided to head back to Carson as I had pretty much given up on finding the church I was looking for. I needed to video the other places there like the restaurants. As I got off the freeway, I drove by the Carson Community Center, and there were quite a few cars in the parking lot. I thought, that must be some kind of a gathering on a Sunday morning. I better check it out. When I asked the attendant in front of the community center if there was a church service meeting there, he said yes, and he told me the name of the church. Well, I was disappointed, as I had not heard of it, as part of my research trying to locate the, and visit the most popular churches in the area. So on a whim I said, well, I was hoping to find the American Filipino Community Church. And I just wanted to see, maybe had they heard of it. And the man said, that's us, but we've changed our name quite some time ago. So you found the right place. And maybe, just maybe, you're supposed to be with us here this morning. I guess he was serious, as before I knew it, he grabbed me by the arm and walked me into the church, as it was just a few minutes after 10 a.m. and the service had just started. The next thing I know, he introduced me directly to the pastor. And there I was in the front row of the church for the next two hours in front of all these people I've never met. By the way, I was the only non-Filipino there out of at least 125 or more people. Honestly, the service caught me by surprise as I was just planning to shoot some video and go, but I ended up staying for the entire thing and I found it quite moving. It was an experience. The worship music was powerful. The main singer had an incredible voice. and the musicians were clearly practiced. You know, I grew up going to church, and I still attend to it. But this experience was definitely different. So I was watching intently to everything that happened. Including the message from the pastor. At one point, a younger pastor asked for all the children and the teenagers to come forward with their parents. I just want to invite everyone who has their kids. And if you're part of the youth, these people, we have their bags. Come on, come on, come on. Oh yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. It doesn't matter their age. 
God, we also thank you for the parents, for the guardians of these kids, that you would give them the strength and the power to be firm in the word, that whatever it is that is said by your word, that is what we will do. God, these next generation, they will bring, they will carry on your word. The young pastor prayed for protection and wisdom in making good life choices for all the youth there. I just had never seen that done before. I thought that was pretty cool, actually. From there, the main pastor, Joel, came up, and he delivered his sermon. At the end of his sermon, I had to step out for a minute. When I came back, about a third of the entire church was standing up front. I thought, what did I miss? What's going on here? Then I realized that the pastor must have asked that if anyone needed prayer to come forward. Now, there were at least 40 to 50 people up there, and the pastor and his wife prayed for every single person there. I stayed for the entire two-hour service, and the pastor, Joe Bianco, spent time with me after the service, trying to understand why I was there and why I wanted to shoot video. <laughs> of his church, even though I asked him beforehand and he gave me permission, but he just wanted some clarification. He talked to me about the Filipino community in the area, which was insightful. I told the pastor that I had only experienced a church service like this once before. It turns out the pastor of that church was his mentor. What a small world it is sometimes. Though his church is located on Manila Street in Carson, they have outgrown it. So the services now meet at the Carson Community Center on Sunday mornings at 10, which has an incredibly nice facility. I may have been the only white guy there for the service, but everyone was really gracious to me, and I felt very welcome there. I could stop by the Carson Mall earlier in the week that's close by, thinking that since malls are so popular in the Philippines, that this should be a local meeting place and an easy place to find some Filipinos. But when I was there, I didn't really find any. I asked the pastor about it, and he said that most of the Filipinos visit the Dalama Mall in Torrance, which is about a 10-minute drive away. You know, that's kind of funny because that was a mall that I went to as a teenager years ago. I hadn't been back there in a very long time, so I stopped by and I checked it out. It's a very nice, large complex with major mall retailers and restaurants, and even includes a Shake Shack, which has great burgers and fries. And I had only previously seen it in Hong Kong, as you can see in this picture here from the Shake Shack in Hong Kong. It turns out that Shake Shack is actually located in 18 countries, including the U.S., and actually has doubled its locations to 500 units in just the last four years, as apparently they're quite innovative in their menu. Well, I had the double with cheese, and that was one of the best burgers and fries I've had in quite some time. There is also a popular Catholic church in Carson that Filipinos attend, and it's called St. Philomena Catholic Church. So I went there too and visited them. St. Philomena is known for its welcoming environment and community activities. It was only 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning when I stopped by, and it was already standing room only. They also have a school as part of the facility. As this is a well-established Catholic church and it's known throughout this entire area, a funny thing happened as I walked towards the sanctuary to visit the service. A Filipino man was very excited to be there. He stopped me outside and asked me to take his picture on his phone so he could send it back home to his relatives. So I guess you could say St. Philomena is known even in the Philippines. I really enjoyed how they're formal about things as they go through the various stages of the service. I like how they wear special robes and participate in traditional sacraments out of respect for their faith and congregation. It just makes you feel like you're part of something special, like attending a wedding or something like that. 
So in total today, I visited three churches all this morning and enjoyed every single one. I think my mom would be happy with that because she's always asking me, you're going to church this morning, right? I also came across a store here called Seafood City Supermarkets. And it turns out that it's a specific chain of Filipino supermarkets across the U.S. and Canada with about 30 locations. It was started in San Diego in 1989 and continues to expand as they just opened up a new store in Anaheim, which is relatively close to Disneyland here. They target Filipino and Asian communities. There is even Filipino music playing in the store while I walk through. Look at all the specific Filipino food choices and product categories with lots of seafood, as you can see, living up to its name, Seafood City. If you told me that I was in the Philippines while I was walking inside the store, I would have believed you, as people spoke their native tongue. I heard Tagalog, I heard Cebuana, and some other dialects. And the place is so authentic that there was very few U.S. grocery brands in there. Look at the rice aisle here. 40 pound bags of rice. I mean, that's just not something you see every day in most American grocery stores, but that's a staple in the Filipino culture. While these stores are primarily located in California, Nevada, Washington, and Hawaii, kind of following around the Asian and especially the Filipino populations. But they also have locations in Texas, Illinois, and New Jersey, along with several in Canada. I got a kick out of this guy cooking with these skewers. They looked really good, and right next door to him was the Red Ribbon Bakery, with lots of Filipino treats with mango flavors, among other things. There was also a Chow King restaurant adjacent to the store, which can also be found in the Philippines. So if you want to experience the Philippines while in America, all you have to do is stop by Carson, California, or one of the other highly concentrated Filipino communities, either in California or one of the other cities that we've mentioned previously. This way you'll have much more of an idea of what life is like in one of these Filipino communities and be able to experience a little bit of the Philippines while still in the States. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Life Across the Sea and found this information interesting and helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that others can find this information. Thank you.